Hello and welcome. I'm River Soft Art, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about an upcoming product for myself, uh, an upcoming bundle for myself called the Camera Doctor Bundle. The Camera Doctor Bundle is a suite of over 20 different scripts for creating, accessing, and using cameras in Daz Studio and making that easier and quicker. It includes four products. Um, the Camera Doctor product itself, which has 16 different scripts for uh, cameras. There's Camera Cutaway, which is an iRay only product for using iRay section planes to help either reduce the rendering time of your iRay scenes or for helping you uh, look into uh, inside of different objects and, and render inside of different objects. There's camera depth of field focus, which is for setting up the depth of field uh, with a camera. And finally, camera point of view, which creates uh, point of view cameras for either a figure or for the sun for setting up the shadows in a sun sky uh, iray environment scene. So if you come into Daz Studio after installing all four products under the scripts Riversoft Art Camera Doctor, you'll have 25 different icons in here. One is a script for installing all of the scripts under our favorites menu. One is for bringing up the manual. And this will come up. And then the others are the scripts. The first one I'm going to talk to you today about is the uh, camera depth of field focus. So this is an awesome script. This is actually the genesis of what became the Camera Doctor bundle. What I've wanted to be able to do is say, okay, I have depth of field on and I want to make it so it focuses on a certain point just by clicking on it. So that's what it does. You select your camera, you have this preview here, and you select a tool. So for focal distance, I want it to focus on the head of the skeleton. I just click that, it immediately changes the, F, the focal distance to exactly the distance to include that. And similarly, you can do the F stop. So that it will adjust those near and far planes. I want them to uh, include this um, skeleton skull. So by clicking that, it automatically adjusted them so that they uh, include the planes include those. And that's how easy it is to use. Let me switch to the perspective view. And uh, that was select these two to frame it and then I think it was camera two we were looking at and it's hard to see I'm going to turn off the iRay preview oh they're not visible that's why uh, yeah so if you have this you can see here uh, let me zoom in it exactly adjusted the depth of field focal distance so it includes that and then adjusted these near and far planes to put that other skeleton all in acceptably sharp focus very easy to do very quick and it can also work you know sometimes there it's difficult and you want to select objects that are either hard to click or you know nodes that are hard to click or not even on the scene um, for example, we could say we want this chair. So before you start the script, select the chair, start camera depth of field, and say let's use that select node as the um, focal distance. Or similarly, you could do it for the f-stop. And you click accept, and you get out. And again, if we look at it, it adjusted so the focal distance. Awesome script that I've wanted for a long time. So the next product I want to talk about is Camera Cutaway. This product is great for either reducing your rendering time or for um, uh, 
cutting away objects to, to render inside them. So I, I should mention it does not reduce memory usage on the GPU. It's only reducing the memory time. So what they do is you, uh, for camera cutaway, you select your, your camera, and I must have missed. Um, you select your camera view, and now this is a dense, dense scene. This is forest, uh, got lots of polygons. And if you start camera cutaway, what it does is it creates cutaway planes just outside the view of the camera. So there's a left one, there's one right here, there's the right one, one right here, and then there's one at the top and the bottom. And if you select them, this drastically, uh, iRay just basically throws away the view of all of the polygons outside the scene uh, in the direction of those camera cutaways. If we go to another view like the perspective, and that was camera 12. And if we look at just select camera 12, so here's you can see what it's doing. It's this bit, it, it's set up this cutaway. I believe it was on camera 12. We set this up, yes. Um, just outside the view of the camera, there's these cutaway planes. And they, it, it basically prunes out all of the um, geometry, making it much faster. Now, I should mention that it actually changes the lighting of the scene if there's things, you know, like here there's trees. So let's hide the camera cutaway. And you'll notice some shadows from the uh, trees that are off, off, uh, off camera. Uh, showing up. So camera cutaway does affect that. Oops, I should have selected it. The camera cutaway. Turn it back on. And you know, so it's it changes the lighting. However, you can still fix that by doing, okay, we want the light and the shadows from the left. Turn that back on. In this case, and we'll set up top and bottom and accept. So the others, the clip lights option are off um, and only on the left it's on. Because if you turn that clip lights option, it, it restores your lighting and the shadows, but you lose all that uh, optimization of the rendering. But by, you know, uh, toggling it based upon which ones you need, you can uh, get back the lighting of the scene and still get some optimization. And what's cool about these cutaway planes is they are parented to the camera. So you get this optimization no matter how the camera moves. It will be cutting these things and you're not changing your scene. You're, so you could actually use this to optimize animations without you know, having to hide or uh, show objects or anything else. Um, other scripts in there. So there's the hide all. So if you attach it to different uh, cameras, these are kind of like a global slice through your scene. So if we create one on this one and accept it, um, each of them are going to be slicing up the scene. And, you know, it can look wrong for one of the scenes. So I think it's 12. Um, it's not showing up in this. What you want to do is hide all the ones that you've made and only turn on the one that you want to look at. So in this case, we only want to look at the camera 12. Uh, another thing is that if you're using this and you go and you change your, uh, your render settings, your aspect ratio. So let's change it so we want uh, you know, more of a portrait style. Um, actually, let's change it to like an ultra wide. Where's, uh... Nope, that's not it. What am I looking for? Um... Yeah, you'll notice that the camera cut, they're cutting away geometry you can actually see. 
So what you can do is run this script, the camera cutaway reset, and this resets the locations of all the cutaway planes so that they are back where they are, need to be to be off screen or off camera, I guess I should say. All right, I'm going to get out of iRay and load up another scene to show you <clears throat> to show you a, a the other feature of camera cutaway, the scene cutaway. Okay, I've loaded in another scene. This one's a great example. This is the Louisiana bathroom. And if we set it up to render uh, and preview an eye ray, this is a very tight environment. And what we want to do is have the camera behind the figure. Uh, so you can see the lighting here. Uh, the sun sky is coming through the window. Uh, the lights are on. But it's, it, you know, it's kind of dim. Now, usually what you will do is you'll go, okay, I want to set up, um, I believe it's this camera. Um, I want to look through that back wall. Let me hide the wall. Uh, I, did I select the wrong wall? Oh, I think I have it off. Yeah. Let me hide the wall. And a couple of problems. One, we have this mirror, and it's showing that there, you know, if I go to back out to here, that there's nothing there <laughs> beside, behind the scene. Um, this was camera, this one. Yeah. Um, so let's select that. Yeah, so it, but it's drastically changing the lighting because the light's coming in through that missing wall. If we go back to that original view, now instead of dim, it's it's really bright. That's one of the uh, that's the other problem. So the reflections in the mirror, and also the uh, change in the actual lighting of the scene. So let's turn that back on, and what we can do is use scene cutaway, which is the other one. So we start this one. And scene cutaway uses camera cutaways to kind of carve into your, your screen. Let's go to this local uh, object. Is it this way? Yeah, there we go. Um, I've set it to local, but let's go to camera view. So the different ones, uh, global sets it up, this scene cutaway on the global XYZ axis. Uh, you can do that there. And then you can change what, what you're cutting away. Go with the Z and it's cutting away in that direction. And Y similarly. It's kind of cool you see <laughs> the uh, scene coming up. And local goes upon whatever you had selected beforehand, before starting the script. Camera sets it up from the point of view of the camera. And then you can use that. It uses the what you selected as the distance from the camera to set it up. And then you just adjust it to be right. I believe with this one, what I want is the z-axis. And then we want to slightly adjust. I forget which way it's supposed to go. I want to get rid of that other wall that's there. There we go. And you could adjust it. But what's interesting is the light didn't change. Yeah, you know, we don't have that missing back wall, so it's not bright. And even though IRA section planes, if you look at it from coming from like the figure's direction out to the camera, it would be a blank, you know, empty scene. In reflections, it shows up that uh, what's the geometry that's there, even though it's been cut off. So by doing this, we've set it up so we could get into that tight space and render it with the lighting we desired without any problems. 
Okay, let's. So that's uh, the iRay uh, cutaway, uh, the camera cutaway product. The next product I want to talk about, and I'll go to this one since it's a great scene for it, is camera point of view. So camera point of view is fantastic for just setting up point of view cameras. So we go, all right, I want to see what this skeleton's looking at. Just select the skeleton, click the script, and it creates the point of view. And you can either parent it to the head, so exactly where the head is oriented toward, or you know, with eyes, what they're looking at. And um, a couple of the other options is that you can set the distance because if it's too close, let's get in, you're actually inside the skull. So you have to adjust it based upon what you, uh, you know, what's the geometry. And it's, um, uh, this will work with most characters and figures. It looks for head or L eye and left eye and right eye and right eye, etc. Uh, a couple of other options, you could actually move the head. So you're like, oh, I like, I like it. But uh, looks like I, you know, didn't set up the head right. Let's move it. So it's actually oriented that way. You click accept. You got that script. And you could do it for any of the, you know, uh, people in the scene. What's the patient looking at? Yep. And you have all of these. Very easy to d use. The other script, you know, so that's the camera point of view, created for a figure. The other script is to help you set up a sun environment scene in iRay. So let me delete the one I had. So, so what it creates is a camera that you can use to orient for the shadows in the scene. So let's bring up the iRay preview. And we've got this scene. Um, and all you have to do is double click this and it will create it at a certain height above your selected object. So let's, before we start it, let's select the Louisiana bathroom and select that and go with that. Now, once you have that, you can actually adjust your scene so it's like, okay, I want the sun to go in this window or adjust the view of that camera. And I want it to cast long shadows all the way to the figure. And let's actually get it like that. So you can see it's set up. So the, by orienting the sun node camera, you orient the, the sun sky for your... Um, iRay sun sky environments. So let's go back to that first camera. And um, it's kind of confusing having this scene cut away. Let's turn that off. And the sun's actually coming in and it's directly casting that shadow. So that's uh, the camera point of view script. Okay, I've loaded up another scene, and I'm going to show you the different scripts in the Camera Doctor product. Um, so let's go with um, one of my favorite and simple one. So let's say you bring in an environment, in this case, uh, Batuka 3D's gas station. It comes with a lot of, you know, cameras. And uh, usually what I want to do is like, okay, I want to see what each of the camera does, and I got to click this and click this. And that just drove me crazy. So just a simple thing is I list all the cameras, and then I can use the up and down arrows to go through all the cameras. And then I can accept the one I want. Love that. Very simple. Um, oh, and I should mention with that one, these, these change the visibility of the camera. So if we want the cameras to all be invisible in the scene, just click that or click it to turn it on. And you can do individual ones as well. Um, and 
you can adjust what cameras are shown in the list. We could show only all the perspective cameras. We could show only the orthogonal cameras. Or we could actually do ones where um, let's have all the cameras. But I want all the cameras with a one in the name. So click say one, match to labels, and it matches on the labels. And this is a regular expression, so you can do all kinds of different things. I want everything that's a one or a two. And you see that that's in there. You would have to learn regular expressions, but very easy to use, very easy to kind of scan your scene or, or change what you want. I, I love it much better than using this thing because um, I see all of them at a glance. Now there's also a visual switcher. This one's a little bit different. It's kind of uh, uh, what it does, and I'll bring it up, is it shows a preview of all of the cameras in the scene. Now if you have it on iRay preview, this can be an expensive operation, but otherwise it's actually pretty fast. So you could see immediately at a glance, oh, I want this interior one. Let me select this interior one. And again, you can set the visibility, etc. But what's also cool is you can do some um, bulk operations, if you will. So let's say this camera five, this camera four, camera two, camera three. I want all of those to aim at the selection. And I didn't select something when I went in. Let's select the figure. OK, I did select the figure. My bad. Bring these back up. So what was that? That was camera two, three, four, and five. Aim at the selection. Adjust them, and it actually adjusts the previews. You could also do a frame. So it's changed all of them. And what's cool is it actually has the undo stack. So we can undo that. Uh, it doesn't update the previews because I don't know if the undo actually changed the camera views. So to do that, you have to actually hit refresh and it will refresh them all. Undo the selection and you can go all the way, whatever in the stack. So you could um, even have, let's delete some cameras in here and delete this one. Bring up the visual switcher. And you know, you notice there's a lot fewer cameras, but let's undo that delete. I think it was 12. So undo delete. All of a sudden, camera 12 is there. Undo the other delete. All, uh, all those other cameras come back or redo, and it will update the scene. And this could be for anything you uh, you have applied to the figure. So let's close this. Let's select the figure. Um, and I'll just do the perspective view. And let's apply a different pose. Right, as we'll finish filtering by content. Okay, so we have that pose. We have a couple of poses. So then we have the camera switcher, <clears throat> and we want to see what that does in the scenes. So this one, and uh, let's change this one so it frames the selection. Oh, that's going to be something that it. Uh, undoes. But if you add these two, undo frame selection, um, undo the different poses, we can refresh and show what's happening with both of those. So it works with anywhere on the stack. I wouldn't recommend going past, you know, loading the scene or anything, but works for that. Okay, other scripts. Um, you, there's also a bunch of scripts for helping you 
either with posing or expressions or whatever, they're close-up scripts. So if you select something, in this case we'll select the Genesis uh, 2 female, <clears throat> we can create a close-up camera. And this creates a camera that's centered on the um, the camera's, uh, the, the selected figure's origin. And then you can rotate it around and whatever. So I wanted this. And you save it, and it's actually created, parented to the different, uh, to the selected figure. And this could be for anything. Similarly, there are shortcuts. So if we want to show the head, we just select the thing, double click, and it brings up a camera oriented on the head. And you can set it up. So this one's great for like expressions. Oops, I think I went too close. Let's change that. And you accept, and that camera is there. Um, and by default, it's hidden, so it's not cluttering your scene in the viewport. Uh, and it doesn't use the point at head option that uh, Daz Studio has. So if you ever want to be like, oh, I want to change its orientation, let's either select the head, the parent node, or select the camera itself and click the uh, camera orbit script. And this will say, okay, we want it like that. And that works, the camera or orbit script works for anything in the scene. Any camera that has a parent. So we could take this camera and let's select that. And where's the cameras? They're far away. Um, select this. Select the camera. And let's parent it to that. Um, just anything, I guess. We'll do it to the fridge. So this is now parented towards the fridge. You start the camera orbit. Oh, and we need to change. It points towards that fridge. And we'll set it up so it exactly orbits around. And you can zoom it in. Let's make it a little bit less than that. So there's the fridge. So. I like this a lot better than trying to do work with the point at uh, thing that's in Daz Studio. So that's that script. Um, let's see, other ones. We have ones that just, if you've selected a bunch of things in your scene, let's go back out to the this view. And select the figure. Well, let's let's hide the rest of this. Uh, you could select a bunch of cameras, you could select the figure, and frame selection, or aim at selection, will change all of those so they go to that selection. So, so they point at exactly at that. And similarly, the frame will change all of those so it frames everything but the cameras in your selection. So this could be multiple selections. So let's select the car as well. So it's got the car and the figure, or the aim at. So let's move it to the side, aim at. Um, you can hide all the cameras in your scene. It tells you how many cameras were done. Uh, if you have cameras selected, it only uses the selected cameras. You notice four of them are changed. If you don't have camera any cameras in your selection, it does all the cameras in the scene. And similarly, the show. Um, we've done the close-ups. Um, you can make your cameras non-selectable. So basically it unchecks this so you, you know, if they are visible in the scene, you can't click anywhere in the viewport to 
select them. And similarly, that. Um, the last one, something I like as a, a posing person. So let's say we have the figure. And, you know, a lot of times what I want to do is look at the different orthogonal views. And let's just move the orthogonal views so they're oriented differently. Now you have all these different orthogonal views. It's a great way of looking at something when you're trying to pose it. So you just select what you want to frame. You click this one, and it changes all the orthogonal views. So it's perfectly uh, you know, framed. And then you can be like, oh, yeah, I need to fix that, you know, et cetera. Um, and I believe that's everything. So that's the entire Camera Doctor bundle. I hope you're as excited about it as I am. I think it's awesome. Everything, basically everything I've wanted to do with cameras, I think in scripts, I have. Um, famous last words. But uh, it, you do a lot of different things with the Camera Doctor bundle. I hope you will love it as much as I will. Uh, please be, you know, ask questions in the forums. Thank you and have a great day.